What's going on, guys? I'm Will with Go to Fighting Secrets. Welcome back to another Warrior Wednesday where we discuss relevant topics designed to make you a better warrior. Today's topic of discussion for Warrior Wednesday is going to be the real world gray man blending into any environment and going undetected. Man, that sounds freaking cool, doesn't it? Like, that sounds like some ninjutsu shit. <clears throat> that sounds like I am a. Like, I'm operating and, like, I can just, like, be invisible. I've got, like, the magic ninja spell where I can just, and then I, like, the smoke comes and I'm, like, now no one can see me. This is such bullshit. Okay. And um, I've just, I've seen so much fucking stupid shit on, like, Gray Man Theory and all of these tactical freaking nerds talking about like their concepts on blending in by like wearing a certain shade of blue because it's harder for the eye to see or like you know obviously like the old cliche of like wear gray grayish clothing or a gray backpack because it's like goes undetected and it'll be more forgettable and like a bunch of stupid shit, man. Like, wear clothes without a logo on it so that people will forget you easier. Like, <laughs> all right, I don't know what you look like, but, like, even if I wear clothes without a logo on it, dude, people ain't fucking forgetting me, man. Like, I got, like, a weird... I got, like, a weird vibe going on sometimes, depending on where I am. Not to mention the fact that, like... <laughs> you think if it matters if I, like, have a logo on me or not and I'm walking down the streets of, like, Delhi, India? No, like, it, it doesn't. Um... There is a lot of, frankly, just pure nonsense um, espoused by, like, a lot of people who I don't think have ever done much <laughs> traveling, <laughs> let alone any operating, right? Like, there's a lot of BS. So this video, this Warrior Wednesday, I'm going to get into some, like, real-world stuff with you. I've I've spent a lot of time out of the country um, that is Conus, right? And I've been to some like pretty shady places where it would it has behooved me very, very much for my personal safety to blend into that environment. And if I can learn how to do this uh looking like this, <laughs> then so can you, okay? And you can do it stateside as well or wherever you're from. I know we got a lot of guys from the UK that like to listen to us, Germany. You know, other parts of the world as well. Listen, this is going to apply to anybody. It doesn't matter if you're what color skin you are, like what build you have, what gait you have. Like, I got a weird posture. I got like, I'm a memorable type of dude. So it's important that I really work on blending into the environments the best way that I can. I am going to tell you the real McCoy, okay? Because I've gone through both sides of this. I've had, I went through the training, right? The like official like training that they give you before you go overseas and like all of that. And they talk about how to be, you know, how to be diplomatic and how to be a gray man, how to blend in. And like, there's a lot of good information in those briefings and those trainings that you go through. And like, it's a lot of great information in it. And it's all like the doctrine that they, that they give you is like battle tested, so to speak. But there's the classroom aspect of this where like certain things sound good and then like you, you, know, you go abroad and you're like, that's ridiculous or like that doesn't apply to me or like this part of this works, but th I need to do this. Like it's there's a lot of trial and error in it. So let me give you what I've learned by going around the world multiple times and what I believe to be some of the best practices when it comes to blending. And now, again, this doesn't necessarily have to be that you're going overseas to any environment, permissive, non-permissive, semi-permissive. You could, you could use this in your own country for a shit hit the fan situation too. It all applies. All right. So with all that being said and kind of out of the way, let's, let's jump into this. Okay. So <laughs> the real world gray man, I remember actually one time I was uh I was in the UK and I was sitting through one of these lectures. Um it was during a surveillance operative course and 
they the instructor said something and he's like how to be he goes how to be okay now this part is we're going to discuss in this lecture how to be a gray man and this scottish dude and he goes mate you don't need any help to how to be a gay man <laughs> i'll never forget that and the instructor this like proper british dude he's like what what right man you bloody idiot i forget bloody something right it was it was fucking funny dude um, so I always think of that when I hear the word gray man now. Mate, you don't need any help to become a bloody gay man. <laughs> We're very inclusive here at Gutter Binding Secrets, so no worries. Um, okay, so blending into any environment to go undetected. This is bullshit because you will be detected if you don't fit the baseline. Um, it's not always about fitting the baseline, but it's more about matching the baseline and like the sun over in this part of the world is insane. Let me just, there we go. Um, now it's like too dark. I feel like a ninja. Is that better? That's tolerable at least. There we go. Um, yeah. So it's not always about fitting the baseline, but matching it. And this is an energy as well as kind of a, tactic right um you will hear like when you read ancient uh ninjutsu texts and uh i've been lucky enough to like be in japan and study some of this stuff you will hear them talk about the energy and um matching the energy of a location of an area that you're that you're in and this might sound a little bit hocus pocus to some of you but it's not um anybody who's ever been out there will will know that like places have an energy to it. And if you really want to blend in, it's too fucking dark. If you really want to blend in, it's more about matching the energy than it is matching like what everybody's wearing or like how everybody looks. If you know the energy of a place, you kind of know like what you can get away with and what you can't at any given time. Um, Let's take a minute to really talk about the baseline, kind of what that means. And yes, I know most of you are aware of what a baseline is, but um, imagine what this happened to me earlier today. I'm walking through a mall and um, everybody's walking just at a normal shopping pace, right? Like they do in a mall. People out here like walk very slowly, typically a lot of them, especially like, you know, in a mall. And there's this one girl just running, running around. And it wasn't like a young girl. She was like, probably, we want to say like 18, 19, 20, something, something around there. Um, it's hard to tell because they all look like they're freaking like 17 over here, even when they're like 30. But I think she was around that age. And she like just kept running. She would run from one end side of the mall to the other. And she wasn't in like exercise clothes, right? She was in a blue hoodie, some pants, some sneakers, like, normal normal clothes and everybody would just like look right that didn't match the baseline and then i would walk around for five minutes and i saw her run around again nobody else was running nobody else was moving fast right so even though she looked like she should be there <clears throat> you know she was the same ethnicity as everybody she had really the same fashion as everybody else but just from that just from moving faster than everybody else she was breaking the baseline and everybody would look. Um, it's like seeing somebody with a military backpack with, with when nobody else has a military backpack. That obviously just screams like, I'm tactical, give me attention. <laughs> That's why I never carry a military backpack ever, 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 unless I'm like doing, doing like training in the woods, you know? Um, it's like... You look down the street in anywhere in Asia, Africa, Arabia, and you see me. <laughs> or you see a white guy, right? Or you see a guy with tattoos, or you see, you know, depending on what air, what 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 part of the world you're in, like you're you're walking down the streets in Moscow and you see a black dude, right? Like that that is not within the baseline. And so you will notice that. And that will stick in your head. Like that will that memory of that person will stick in your head longer than if you just look like everybody else and it doesn't matter if you're not doing anything but you need to realize that 
just simply by not looking like everybody or everything else, you will automatically stick in somebody's head longer. Now, this isn't a bad thing necessarily. Like we're not out here like spies trying to recruit, right? Like we're not, this isn't like sneaky peaky shit. We're like, you really need to be under the radar like a lot, a lot. Like we're not, we're not worried about that. You know, otherwise we might talk about like the skies is or whatever. Right. But <clears throat> the fact that you are going to stick in, in people's heads, we need to kind of be aware that yes, that this is, this is something. And we, there are ways that we can mitigate this. Well, why do we want to mitigate like sticking out in people's heads? Targetability. I mean, mainly we, we would be concerned about when we're doing traveling just for the sake of traveling. Um, targetability, mostly. I mean, you don't want to become the target of criminals or hustlers or any any CD people out there, right? So even though we are aware that we are going to stick out, um, we can take steps to mitigate, number one, how long we stick out in people's heads. And number two, um, we can mitigate their decision that they want to target us. And I will discuss how. When you don't fit the baseline, you stand out. But we can make standing out its own type of camouflage. Again, we have to observe the baseline and try to match it the best we can. Now, this is about knowing the local energy. Again, everything has energy. Every city has its own type of energy. Every every couple of blocks within that city potentially could have its own energy. I mean, you go to Jerusalem and you've got the Armenian quarter, you've got the Jewish quarter, you've got the Arab quarter, you've got, I believe, what's the Greek quarter? Like, you've got different energies and different cultures and different vibes within a very small geographical area, um, just in that one city. And other cities are like this too. Obviously, like San Francisco has Chinatown. So does New York, right? Um, certain there, you know, certain places like Bangkok has Little Arabia, Chinatown as well. Like everywhere has a Chinatown. So there are definite um, cultures and subcultures and different energies within one geographical location. <laughs> so we have to be able to kind of know, number one, know the energy that we're walking into and that we're dealing with. And kind of number two, how do we how do we match this energy the best that we can? Um, if you don't, then obviously you you will look like you don't belong. There is one thing that I wanna that I want to talk about before we go into well how do we how do we put on this invisibility cloak if we don't if we don't really blend in how do we you know how do we operate quote unquote um if if we we look like we don't belong well there's there's something I want to give you there is a really a powerful tool that I want to give you that even if you're not familiar with an area, you can use this and this will really help you out. I'm going to give that to you at the end. So stay with me. Okay. Now, we need to make ourselves essentially in order to put on this cloak of invisibility, or I call it the expat cloak, we basically need to make it look like we belong there. Like we have been there for some time. We are familiar with the area. We more than likely, and this is what people are going to be thinking. We know the area. We probably have friends and local contacts within the area. We know the rules. We know what's right, what's wrong. And if you mess with us, like it's like messing with a local. You, you will be held accountable for that. I'm not some tourist that you can hassle and hustle and fuck with or potentially rob or whatever, or worse. And then I leave a week later and you get away with it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm living here. I've been here for a year or two or three. And I know your fucking games. Like, don't, don't mess with me. Find somebody else. Find a soft target, right? I'm a hard target, essentially, is what we're kind of trying to say here. Now, 
Languages is absolutely one of the best ways that we can fit the baseline. However, look, I'm here to tell you firsthand, you can't learn all the languages. And number two, even if you do learn the language, that's no guarantee that people aren't going to mess with you, right? Because even if you are, like for me personally, I'm a white dude with tattoos who speaks Arabic. <laughs> when I'm in the Middle East, uh, in certain countries, they don't give a fuck I speak Arabic. I'm still a white dude who like doesn't belong there and they know I haven't been there for a long time. So... It's also incredibly difficult to like, honestly, and I'm I'm being honest with you, um, it's difficult even after three months in a country to like learn the language. Um, you will be able to learn a handful of things, but still really not enough to communicate. So unless you are deciding to go somewhere for like a year's time or settle somewhere, um, learning the local language is not really that feasible. You can learn a handful of sentences, which I do recommend, but it's, you know, you will still be uh, an outsider. Local slang, grammar can also be uh, a really good thing. So like maybe you don't really know the language, but you know a little bit of local slang. That really helps you kind of blend in more and, and make it seem like you kind of belong, right? Um, and this this could also be for going in certain parts of the United States or certain parts of the UK or wherever else you happen to be. If you learn some of the very local slang, this could help you out. Um, this is all very good for, you know, indigenous camouflage, so to speak. It's all about making it seem, um, making it seem like, or making it obvious that we are supposed to be there and my notes of like, I used voice dictate for my notes and it fucked it all up. But yeah, it's making it seem like we're supposed to be there. So I'm carrying local shopping bags, dude, like carry, carry a local shopping bag. Right. Now I would, I would show you the one that I use, but I don't really want to give away my location. <laughs> so I won't, but, um, dude, if you carry local shopping bags or local backpacks and things like that, like, like what the locals would carry with them, right? Go to like, go to the market, like go to the local market and get a secondhand backpack, dude. Like, trust me, do it. Okay. Don't wear, don't bring your like military molly webbing fucking backpack for God's sakes. Don't do that. Go to the local shop, go to the local souk, the local market, whatever it is, the night market, wherever you are, get a local secondhand backpack. Number one, it looks used. Number two, it's the local, right? So, You'll be good with that. Um, also, like I said, carrying around shit in the local like shopping bags because a lot of places, you know, Europe, Asia, uh, not so much the Middle East. Yeah, Europe and Asia, really, um, they're they're not really giving out a lot of plastic bags anymore, right? Depending on where you go, they like to give you the supermarkets at least, they like to give you like the the mesh, whatever, like the reusable bags. Carry your shit around in that. Um get local clothing, right? Now, you don't need to like get decked out head to toe, right, in in local garb. I mean, in some places you do. Like I've never been to Pakistan, not yet, but I've heard that that's actually the thing to do out there. Um, but, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not really a proponent necessarily of always wearing the local garb. Like I've been to the Middle East a bunch. I don't think I've ever... I've only put on like a thobe and kofia, you know, like the man dress and the head thing. Um, I've only done that like twice, maybe. Um, you can, but you don't, you know. Anyway, I'm not talking about that, but I, I am talking about like go to the local shops and acquire a t-shirt, right? Like a local type of t-shirt. And I'm not saying like one that would the tourists would use, right? Don't, don't, don't do that. That's counterproductive. Um, but you can get something with a, like a local brand on it and, and rock that, right. Um, observe what everyone else is doing. I remember when I got to Delhi, India this is where I took this. Um, I noticed nobody wore shorts to nobody, nobody. And obviously like I'm a white tourist, like no one's going to fault me for wearing shorts, but it just, it, it looks better if you kind of blend in as much as possible. Um, and it really does give you more of a, 
I don't know, more of an invisibility cloak almost. Notice they're wearing jean. Dude, dude, it was like, I don't know, 48 Celsius when I was there. Like, and for Americans, that's fucking hot. Uh, maybe it was like 45, something like that. It was fucking hot. Um, dude, look, the guys wear like long sleeve shirts, sleeves rolled up, pants, right? And a lot of them wear sandals. I don't because you can't run in sandals. Uh, so I'll wear, you know, closed toed shoes, Adidas usually, um, or Nikes. <clears throat> it's two like pretty popular brands out, out this way, everywhere, but yeah. <clears throat> and again, I like to get a brand that I can go to a lot of different countries and it's like, it's there, right? Um, so doing this type of, I feel like it's like super dark now. Doing this type of thing where you you acquire like local things along the way. Again, you don't have to like wear like, I don't even know what this is called, but don't do that, man. But do this, right? Dress more like this guy right here. Um, I think with the green screen that like, that will work when I'm, anyway. You get what I mean? Um, again, when I'm in the Middle East, dude, I remember I was walking down the streets in the Middle East one day, I won't tell you where, and I was, not that it's a government secret or anything, I just, um, and everyone was looking at me like a motherfucker, dude, like everybody, everybody was looking at me, dude, I had a plain white t-shirt on, pair of jeans and pair of sneakers, right? But again, like this, this... <laughs> This is not like very common out there, dude. Everyone was just like eyeballing me, staring me. And like, like some of them just looked at me like, dude, I want to kill you so bad. <laughs> it was like very awkward. So I remember I like hopped into this little mall. There was this soup, this fucking Indian guy. Of course, the Indians are everywhere. And he had like a shirt kind of like this, but it was like more red and blue. Long sleeve, like lightweight flannel shirt. And I was like, dude, fuck, how much? And he like quoted me some absurd price and I try to haggle with him because out, out in this part of the world, you never buy something without haggling. He didn't want to budge. I think it cost me like 20, 20 American dollars or something like that, which is expensive for a fucking shirt like that. And uh, I was like, fuck, just give me it, dude. I, I put it on. It was like a oh, size too small, but like tight fit. But like it, dude, I remember I walked out of that soup. Like I gave it like a couple of minutes just so everyone would pass me by. I walk out and it was like magic. Nobody was looking at me. Like my tattoos were mostly covered up. Like I had the sleeves rolled up just a little bit. Um, and I had a, a light beard already. Um, nobody looked at me. It was it was crazy. It was just the, the night and day difference from doing something so superficial as putting on a local shirt and having a light beard and covering up your tattoos and it's like some of your like muscles or whatever. Um, just the night and day difference alone that made it, it's really crazy. So doing things like that can be absolutely essential. And, you know, if you are a ninja can mean the difference between a successful operation and getting blown. And it can be the difference between life and death, frankly speaking in some parts of the world, it really can be. You need to have a decent understanding of the local energy, what is normal, what is expected and accepted, and what can I get away with? I think I said that earlier, but what is expected and accepted? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> again, if you do things that are outside of the cultural norm, you're going to stand out. And when you're in areas like where there's a bunch of idiot tourists walking around that don't know any better, fine, whatever. That might be something actually you can use to your advantage. But in some places you don't, you really don't want to be breaking some of these social taboos and social norms. Again, we can use this stateside as well. If you're in a fucking ghetto, man, and like you offend the wrong person, like you could get hurt, right? So... <laughs> You're going to want to try to figure out as quickly as possible, like, what is accepted, what is expected, and how much can I get away with? That is the important part as well. How much and what can I get away with?
again, I remember, and I've told this story before, I was in the Middle East in this country and I, I'm out with this girl. We were really, you know, I was chatting her up, whatever. And we ended up spending the night, like the whole evening together. I'd say it like that, the whole evening together and walking around. Dude, I took her to a, a park, right? It was like a darkly lit park. And uh, of course, I'm trying to like, escalate with her so i lean and i try to you know give her a kiss and she blips out she's like what are you doing you can get arrested for that here like they will put you in jail they will deport you this and that and i'm like what like what relax it's fine she's like no no it's not fine dude like and she points to some dude like off in the corner in a freaking coffee and a a thobe right it looks like every other person old man she goes he could be the security service and i'm like what the fuck? And she's like, no, like you don't understand. He legitimately could be a security service. Like he legitimately very well could be. And if he sees that you will be arrested and at the least deported. And I go, what the fuck? Like, geez, better take you back to my hotel room right now, <laughs> which I did. But no, seriously, like you have to know kind of like how much can you get away with? Because I wasn't worried, dude. I'm like, whatever, dude, like no one's going to mess with us. I'll kiss you a little bit. You know, make you a little, get you going a little bit, and then I'll bring you back. But no, 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 like, no. Like, she was very fucking serious. Like, you cannot get away with that there. Like, even in a, in a park alone at night, like, no. <laughs> so, you know, knowing where, how much you can push your boundaries can really mean the difference, again, between, you know, freedom and not freedom or whatever. Safety and not safety enjoying yourself and, and and the other. So knowing where, I'm moving on now, knowing where you are going and at least to some degree, um, I'm sorry, knowing where you're going at least to some degree, right? Knowing where you are going at least to some degree because one thing that like hustlers and other people look for that want to like, do you that, do you nasty, do you dirty, right? Like they will look for somebody that looks confused and they don't know where they're going and stuff. And it's like the classic con man trick. Oh, Hey, like, do you need directions? Hey, where are you from? What's your name? Ah, you know, ah, oh, you're from, you know, California. Oh, cool. I love, I've always want to go there. And they'll like get talking to you and like gain a little bit of rapport, give you compliments. And then the next thing you know, it somehow you're like getting taken advantage of. Um, <clears throat> So we want to avoid that. And so we want to look like, hey, I know where I'm going, even if you don't, but you have a confident demeanor. And that's really about like looking straight ahead of you and um, head up, chest out and just like, I'm I'm going, do not get in my way. I'm busy. I have something to do. I have important business to do. Just don't get in my way. I'm like, Don't talk to me. I'm, I'm going. That type of uh, vibration, that, that type of energy, that big dick type of energy, like that will, that will alone, like get you out of 80% of all of the scams and all that shit, right? Um, but it's even better to actually know where you're going. Now, if you are, if you were really actually like operating in any, get any given area, this is like uber super important to know like your way around very well. Um, you know, when people who are professionals get overseas, they spend a while just getting to know an area like before they start operating a couple of weeks sometimes. And um, <clears throat> this is why I typically say from personal experience, you really won't know the baseline of an area until about two weeks at the very fucking minimum. Um, you should be laying low and getting to know the area for a couple of weeks minimum. I don't think you really know an area, any given area for like a year, six months to a year. Six months is even a little short. You can get to know a small geofence area in a shorter time, right? You can get to know the neighborhood that you're staying in in six months, three to six months, maybe something like that, six months. But to know kind of a city um, on any decent level, and I'm not even saying know it very well. Um. For most of us, unless you're like driving around it, walking around the whole city every day, say, you know, eight months to a year before you really kind of know your way around. You should take that into account when you are out there.
you don't know where you are as well as you think you do. And you don't know where you are as well as <laughs> the locals do. So that can work good and bad, right? And again, this is why I'm a big proponent of a local guide. Your first couple of days to a week in country, you should be with a local guide, whether that's a tour guide, whether that's a local that you're acquainted with, a friend or whatever, that this is very essential, but that's for another video topic. Um, but you need somebody to explain to you, hey, what are the local norms here? Where's the customs? Get you on your feet so you can then start learning on your own safely. So I mentioned that there is one tool in our toolkit that we can use when all this fails, right? Or before we learn the baseline, before we get to know the area or the culture or the norms or the baseline, right? And so I won't keep you waiting any longer. Um, that's fake it till you make it. Walk around with the big dick energy, like I said. Um, and make it abundantly clear through your energy and your body language that you are a big swinging dick. You're not to be fucked with. I'm here on important business, dude. Like, I'm walking, but like, I'm not the one you want to fuck with. I promise. I am here on official business and like, you don't want problems with me. That's the energy that you need to have in your head. Um, and that's the energy that you need to resonate. Now, that will work until it doesn't work. <laughs> But when you're just walking down the street and you do have that, you do give off that energy that, I mean, I know where I'm going exactly, but I know where I'm going and you don't want to mess with me. Um, that That is a way that you can get through an area, albeit, you know, even a semi-hostile area um, safely. I wouldn't rely on it, but that is an energy that you would like to present sometimes um, when crossing through a danger area, I'll say it like that. Just act like you, you do not want to fuck with me. Let me go in safety and I won't fuck with you either. So this is some tips from me to you. This is some real world tips. I, you know, I'm trying to sit here and think anything else I can give you as far as like really blending in, but it's, it's not about like necessarily the color of clothes that you wear, although Bright colors do stand out, right? Even a white t-shirt like stands out. Bright tattoos stand out. This type of thing stands out. Tactical sunglasses, again, all of that stuff, it stands out. And if that's the impression that you want to give, okay, well then good job. But if it's not, then don't wear stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> no no kind of how to dress and how to operate and how to act in the environment that you're in, whether that's stateside, whether that's in Europe, whether that's in Asia, Africa, the mid, whatever, right? Fucking Antarctica. <laughs> Blending with the penguins or whatever, but there's a lot more to this subject. And again, I know I don't get a lot of views for these types of videos because a lot of people don't go to like third world countries or like other countries in, in general. <laughs> um and 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 hang out but again we can take all of this stuff and apply it to a shit hit the fan situation the same way right if everybody else has been three weeks since they've eaten um a real like good decent meal and um their clothes are starting to smell and uh they haven't had a shower in three four weeks and you walk down the street smelling like Irish fucking spring and skull and freaking, <laughs> you know, like you still got a kind of a beer belly on you from the, from the rice and beans you've been having, you know, and steak that you had in your freight, like whatever, right? Um, you're not in the baseline and you will become a target. If you, if every house on your block, except maybe one other one is out of electricity for the past two weeks but you've got your generator going and your lights on and your TV are going, right? Um, well, guess what? Now your house is definitely a target. So baseline, all right? I'm going to harp on that. Um, the rest of this video, know how to blend in. And when you know how to blend in, 
Masashi said it best. If you know the way broadly, you will know the way and see the way in all things. With that being said, I'm going to call it here, guys. You are your first and last line of defense. Don't forget that. Stay safe out there, Warriors. Let me know if you have any questions. Pop them in the comments down below. Give us a thumbs up. If you could, I would really appreciate it. It helps drive us up in the algorithm. And um, visit gutterfightingsecrets.com. Grab a t-shirt. Support us. Hey, I again, I'm thankful for every, every dollar we get because it usually goes right back into the channel. All right, guys. I'll see you on Saturday for a hand-to-hand -hand combat training video. Cheers, motherfuckers.